Mr. Speaker, they were arrested. Students were arrested, too. The opposition is convinced it was the Prime Minister who told the RCMP to clamp down on student protests. Now they claim they have a witness. And, and I talked with her today, and she's absolutely clear in her recollection because she was astounded to see the Prime Minister, as she described it, running around uh, like a chicken with his head cut off and barking orders. The government is sticking to its strategy of referring all questions about its role to the RCMP inquiry. The security arrangements are the responsibility of the RCMP. The RCMP is being investigated in the broadest possible way by the Public Complaints Commission, and we'll get to the truth. That worries the opposition who believes limiting the inquiry to RCMP actions will get the Prime Minister off the hook. It has no ability to be able to go after the Prime Minister and the political interference. They may have a point. The head of the Complaints Commission admits its mandate is to investigate the RCMP's conduct, not the government's. And that if the trail of evidence does lead to the Prime Minister's office, the inquiry will be in uncharted territory. Sean Poulter, ISN, Ottawa. Retiring South African President Nelson Mandela arrived in Ottawa today for his first state visit to Canada. The man who has dedicated his life to the advancement of the oppressed was warmly greeted by a number of dignitaries, including Prime Minister Jean Chrétien and Governor General Romeo Leblanc. During a stop at Rideau Hall, Mr. Mandela spoke of his gratitude to Canada and Canadians for their help in the struggle for democracy in South Africa. Uh, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to come and thank the people of Canada directly for the enormous assistance they have given us. If it were not for that support and the support of the rest of the international community, the struggle to overthrow white supremacy in, the, in our country would have been extremely expensive. More signs tonight that Democrats and Republicans can't see eye to eye on the Clinton scandal. Democrats accuse Republicans of seeking to drag out the investigation of the president for political purposes. Presidential spokesman Mike McCurry says the White House has to be reconciled to the likelihood of an impeachment inquiry. John King has the latest. CNN has learned that President Clinton is raising concerns about paying a big financial price as part of any plea bargain in the impeachment debate. A close advisor and two other Democrats who have spoken with the president in recent days Tell CNN Mr. Clinton reminded them he already faces millions of dollars in unpaid legal fees from the Starr investigation and the Paula Jones lawsuit. Specifically, two of these sources say Mr. Clinton objects to an idea gaining steam among Democrats, a financial penalty that includes docking his pension. Still, the White House is eager for a deal and acknowledges Mr. Clinton would have to pay a price. Democrats are seizing on polls showing the American people are tired of all this and suggesting Republicans will suffer if they drag things out. One particular Republican was singled out as the White House complained that the GOP was slowing the impeachment process for partisan gain. Looks like it's the speaker that's calling the shots. Gingrich says he won't be rushed. And I, I don't think people uh, want this Congress to deal with a constitutional issue based on the latest overnight poll. The Republican refusal to talk deal has the White House and its allies reluctant to detail just what the president would accept. There is not a defined deal. I don't think the president has authorized a deal. White House aides say their best hope for a deal lies in the Senate, where even some Republicans are privately pushing talk of compromise. But for the debate over punishing the president to officially move to the Senate, the House would first have to vote out articles of impeachment, a price no president is eager to pay. John King, CNN, the White House. And checking the stories making headlines across Ontario tonight. Ontario Hydro will be spending $125 million before the year 2000 to make sure its computer systems are protected from the millennium bug. Thousands of computers more than two decades old have to be checked. Many of them control the province's power grid. The so-called bug is expected to produce worldwide chaos because computers are unable to read the year 2000. It may be painful, but it's got to be done. That's what a study commissioned by Environment Canada says about the reduction of car and truck pollution. One of the recommendations is to redesign car insurance so that drivers pay more for every kilometer they travel. Ministry of Transportation officials don't seem to be too optimistic that any of the changes will take place. 
They say the report not only tells people to drive less, but to avoid owning a car altogether. It took more than 12 hours for Peel police to get a protester out of a... Lori Callis and her friend were fighting local developers who were cutting down some of Ontario's oldest maples so that they could build a townhouse complex in Port Credit. When police finally coaxed the woman down, she was charged with trespassing, resisting arrest, and mischief. One of the men charged with bombing a Sudbury police station has committed suicide. Michael Dubé of Sudbury was found hanging in his cell last night and was rushed to hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Dubé and two members of the Hamilton Satan's Choice gang were charged with the bombing of the Sudbury Regional Police Headquarters in 1996. $900 worth of bogus casino chips landed a Buffalo man in jail for 30 days. Gordon Pollock admitted to defrauding Casino Niagara by painting $5 chips to look like $100 chips. He told a St. Catharines court today that he began the chip painting scam after losing about $10,000 in casinos across North America. Casino Niagara is demanding that Pollock pay back the $900 in addition to his jail term. And still ahead tonight, Steve Ruddock checks in with the Ontario weather forecast and Jamie West reports on aging and space. Stay with us. Well, it's bad enough that summer is now over, but thinking about flu season is even worse. And with winter just around the corner, Health Canada is being asked to approve a new flu drug, which is inhaled rather than injected or swallowed. The drug is called Relenza and is to be inhaled as soon as a person notices signs of the virus like fever and muscle aches. It's said to work on both influenza A and B. Well, as the North American population grows older, maintaining our health has become a major concern to everyone. As on TV's Jamie West reports, some of the new medical experiments about to be launched are out of this world. When Discovery blasts off on October 29th, it will focus on the aging process of humans. Among the crew that includes Canadian astronaut Dr. Dave Williams, is the oldest human to fly in space, 77-year-old astronaut John Glenn. I had a chance to talk to him about this yesterday. He's thrilled to be part of this mission, and for me, it's a thrill talking to somebody that flew the first orbital flight for NASA many, many years ago. Three experiments will be conducted, the most extensive on osteoporosis, a disease that results in brittle bones leading to painful fractures affecting 1.4 million Canadians. I alternated between panic and depression. Everything I did seemed to uh, increase my pain, even something as simple as washing dishes. Earlier shuttle missions showed that astronauts were losing bone density in space. The new studies will focus on two types of living bone cells, osteoblasts that create bone tissue and osteoclasts that eat bone tissue. These two cells are working in our bodies all our lives to keep the balance of our bone uh, maintained. Somehow this balance is lost, and we want to find out why. And if we can understand that process, maybe we can 